uh, i see some of the topics this, 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 this. okay so guys uh, before starting the practice questions i want like i want to know how much uh, you guys could grasp uh, from last two days okay so i started exception exception okay so can anyone tell me the difference between error and exception first what is the basic difference between error and exception anyone Sir, any volunteer er error causes uh, just because of jvm failure or uh, other issues whereas exception mainly causes because of uh, faulty logic mm-hmm. okay okay great okay uh, anyone else any brave guy so exceptions can be handled whereas when error occurs the program will get terminated uh, totally in exceptions uh, by catching them we can continue the below part of the code okay great what about others uh, so just let me let me refresh you guys who say couldn't understand or some uh, some uh, issue with the understanding so on a higher level basically all java classes belongs to uh, one particular class basically what what does that, that means means uh, uh, java being the oops uh, language there would be a concept of inheritance right there would be the parent child model basically so all the classes in java uh, belongs to one parent class and that parent class we call it as a object, object class. class yeah okay so don't worry about my handwriting just try to un- uh, follow my words okay so under the object class we have a child class and that is called throwable throwable class okay and this parent class has two child class okay don't worry uh, see this object uh, basically this object class has other classes also other sub classes also but since we are discussing about the exception so we will not talk about those child child class we will talk only about the throwable child class don't think like object class has only one child and that is throwable it's not like that there are many plenty of classes under the object class okay but uh, as far as the exceptions are concerned exceptions and errors are concerned we will talk only about the throwable class okay the so throwable is basically the parent of the errors and exceptions okay so throwable has two child error and exceptions okay so this hierarchy you should understand because sometimes in the interviews also they can ask uh, what is the hierarchy of let's say uh, run time exception or let's say null pointer exception in the uh, java okay so you should understand so under the throwable we have error and exceptions okay as one of you or two of you told what is error basically so error is something which occurs due to the system failures due to the system failure okay so when we say system failure let's take an example like um okay uh, let's let's say you are installing some software let's say uh, you are installing eclipse you know machine okay and you have i3 processor and the ram already like all the uh, memory is there all the uh, basically the rom part of your machine is occupied with some other stuffs in your machine okay so let's say uh, we require 1 gb of uh, memory to install eclipse but you have only let's say uh, uh, 900 mb or something okay 900 mb or something is remaining in your machine so what will happen if you will install eclipse in that condition so as soon as you will download you will click on the installing the eclipse uh, executable file it will keep on uh, installing the required files but a point will come where your memory will be exhausted where 900 memory available memory space in your machine will be exhausted in that case what will happen your uh, installation will fail okay so it's just an example it's just an analogy you can say uh, for the error so error is something where the system fails so system fails in this sense as far as the java program is concerned suppose you have written some program some java files you have written and then let's say uh, basically what happens your source code gets compiled to dot class file right uh, let me just recap make you recap the things okay so what happens you write your source code source code gets uh, converted to executable code yes. and that executable yes. code gets converted to java output basically whatever the desired output you, you want from the program you get that one right so what have, what will happen suppose uh, it can happen an, in any way during the compilation also compilation means converting the source code to the executable code so in between this step if some error occurs 
okay if some something ha something happens something happens in this sense it can be like the uh, your machine so let's let's say example like you are running a program you are running uh, the code in your eclipse or intellij and you have restarted your machine or by default let's say system automatically restarted your machine okay so in that case also error will occur error can occur okay so one famous question uh, can be asked in your inter from your interviews like at which step error can occur is it like converting from source code to executable code or uh, converting the executable code to the final output at which step it gets occur basically the error so it can occur at any point at any point uh, during the executing of the code be it converting from source code to executable code or from executable exec executable code to the machine code okay that means your output so at any step error can occur okay so that was pretty much about the error don't worry uh, errors are not something which we can handle as a programmer as a developer but yeah we have a different kind of uh, situation that we call as a exception okay so what is uh, suppose someone asks you yes uh, i think two of you answered it correctly only but the hello uh, am i audible now yes sir yes sir okay so actually there was interruption from the network from my end okay so i can i think everyone can see my screen now so what i was saying uh, basically if there is any abruption any uh, inheritance inheritance not inheritance but if there is any uh, something uh, some restrictions are uh, happening during the normal flow of the code okay so that we call as an exception okay and uh, you would have seen the different kinds of exception so can anyone name uh, tell me the different names of the exceptions checked unchecked arithmetic exception null pointer exception array index auto bound exception class cast exception okay okay so basically exceptions are broadly classified into two types okay and those are the uh, run time run time run time exceptions or compile time exceptions okay so i think uh, you, you would be already familiar with these two terms run time and compile time so compile time is something which uh, where your source code gets converted to the executable code dot, that's your dot class file and the run time is basically uh, during the execution of the program during the execution means uh, during the complete when you suppose your source code got converted to executable code and then after you are running that command java c if you are aware so at that time your 
so compiled code that means your dot class file gets converted to dot executable file okay so during those phase of the program execution if any error occurs that we call as a runtime and the during the initial phase where your source code gets converted to the byte code that means your dot class file at that moment if any exception occurs that we call as a compile time then again you would have seen the different uh, different types of exception under the compile time and runtime we will see i have taken some uh, examples we will see those kind of exceptions as well okay so basically the uh, we have the checked and unchecked so which one we call as a check exception runtime or compile time compile time sir yeah so compile time exceptions we call as a checked exception and the runtime we call as a unchecked exception okay so this this terms basically you should be familiar with runtime compile time checked unchecked throwable so this uh, so, some some of these terms you should be familiar with okay so uh, you would have seen these kind of exceptions then i think you would had studied the uh, generics also so can anyone tell me why do we need generic classes or generic methods to uh, facilitate with the dynamic data types to correct. decide the data type at run time correct correct okay so basically a generics comes into picture in java whenever we want uh, to decide the type of the basically type means the return type of a method or the return type of a variable or an object during the run time okay if that is the requirement then we go for something called the generics and i think already you would be knowing the syntax and all we write the type under the angular bracket like this the diamond bracket basically okay and what is the okay we will see during the practice session so generics you would have seen uh, exceptions then i think uh, the list uh, collections basically the collection framework so collection frameworks are basically uh, i think you are from the dsa bag uh, dsa uh, batch basically you would have studied the dsa also so from the dsa you would have seen the array list and all those kind of stuffs in java basically we have some something called the collection framework okay so collection framework is nothing but if you have the base for the uh, dsa so you would understand as soon as we will start the questions and uh, with the spring boot batch as well so with the spring boot concept also we will consider this uh, collection framework so no need to focus especially uh, special uh, attention on the collection okay you can understand it by uh, developing the programs in the spring boot itself okay so uh, that's pretty much about the collection uh, exception and the generic classes okay generic methods so uh, let me sh share some of the problems to you okay so uh, okay we will start with the basic problems basic questions first then we will go with the some uh, uh, deep coding as well okay so the first question uh, i have figured out is which which exceptions will be thrown if the below code is executed okay so uh, let me okay i have already created a project for you let me create a class as well so guys i want everyone to participate here it's a practice session so make it a interactive session it should not be boring okay and also we have only few people here so it will not be a problem okay so practice one let me uh, practice q e e question okay so i have created one class here i will just uh, make a main method here and now i'll put this uh, problem here this particular two lines of code it's a very small code here so i want you to tell me if exception will occur with this line of code basically we we have just two line of code one this line number 5 and then we have line number 6 so everyone can see my screen right i think yes, everyone sir. can see okay so uh, basically line number 5 here we are declaring one uh, array of integers sorry uh, yeah we have not taken any type okay let it be so basically we are declaring one uh, array of integer okay and then we are just trying to print out the element at its index position 4 okay so what will happen what do you think will happen when this particular line of codes will be executed so one thing one thing as far as exceptions are concerned so in any of the ids any of the ids means bet or eclipse visual studio intellij if you will write any code which is expected to be having compile time error so in that case what will happen it will show you in a red color right it will show you in a 
red color so here you can see you are not uh, you are not getting any compilation error here so basically in id if suppose i remove this colon here so basically you will get this red mark here, here it is showing some uh, uh, underline with the red color here so that means some compilation error is there okay so in any of the ids the compilation error you can uh, get to know while coding itself the only thing which you cannot understand is your runtime exception okay so we will see so with these two line of code first thing we came to understand like it is not having any which kind of exception compile time or runtime which kind of exception is not present in these two line of code runtime exception Guys, runtime exception is not present uh, what about compile, compile time compile time exception compile is not present. Exception. not present correct compile time compile exception is not present compiled how many people are there 10 people are only there so guys please speak so compile time exceptions are not there exceptions are very very crucial for your uh, career in it field so remember this so make yourself comfortable with these things from now itself i'm just taking a very basic example nothing complicated okay so what is there what first you should understand what is happening with these two line of code okay so in the first line in the first line of code basically we are declaring an array of integer which is having of size four okay in the second line basically we are trying to we are trying to fetch the value at its index position four index position four okay so now if you will run if you will run this code so let's see what what outcome uh, we get it here so if you are getting any background noise just please excuse me for that actually i live in a city so here so much uh, noise comes okay so here you can see array uh, index 4 out of bond of length 4 okay so why this error is coming why this error is coming first uh, you should understand so can anyone tell me why we are getting this error why we are getting array out of Sir, bond the array index starts from 0 to size minus 1 okay okay so if okay. the size of array is 4 then the index uh, valid indexes are in the range of 0 to 3 0 1 to 3 okay. so if okay. we give the index less than 0 or greater than 3 we will get the exception array index out of bonds exception okay okay great okay so that is the reason basically we have declared its size as a 4 4 means basically it will have 0 1 2 3 up to 3 index positions right so index position starts how from how 0 then 1 then it will go till its length minus 1 so here we have length as a 4 so it will have the elements at its index position 0 1 2 and 3 only but here you can see we are trying to fetch the value at its index position 4 okay so you are trying to uh, uh, take the value which is not present okay so suppose someone is asking you to give 500 rupees and 500 is not with you you have only 499 so how you will give okay so that is what happening here so that's why you are getting index out of bond exception so what kind of exception it is is it a runtime or compile time runtime run runtime sir run runtime run exception runtime exception and that is we call as a array out of bond exception array out of bond array out of bond exception okay so some basic questions i have uh, taken here so nothing complicated let's move to the second problem here okay so now i have this lines of code let me keep it here i'll comment it out these lines now let's go with the this part of the code okay so here uh, basically it's nothing but the uh, declaration of the some variable a b c 20 30 10 and then x equal to i am doing some uh, basically the mathematical operation okay so if you calculate it manually so if you evaluate this expression manually sorry if you will evaluate this expression manually so a uh, basically first the uh, numerator will be calculated a into b that means 30 into 20 that means 600 600 right 600 yes, divided by a minus b plus c a minus zero, b plus zero. c means a minus b plus c 20 plus 30 30 minus 30 equal to zero so basically basically 
uh, as you are from the engineering background, so you would be knowing if any number div uh, dividing by zero is not having any specific value. Okay, it's undefined in the mathematical term. Okay, so same is the case for the program also. You cannot divide a number by zero. So if you are dividing any number by zero, so that will come up with a, some exception. Okay, and what we call that exception? Arithmetic exception divided by zero exception. Correct. We call as a arithmetic arithmetic uh, exception. Okay. Call it as arithmetic exception, and that is also a runtime exception. Runtime exception. Okay. So these some some of these are the basics and the frequently. Uh, frequently coming expressions frequently coming exceptions in your program like arithmetic expression a null pointer expression uh, exceptions okay so these are some of the frequently uh, observable uh, exceptions in your program array out of bounds so these things you will uh, handle in your programs okay so this one also i commented out okay let me first show you i didn't run this program right so let me run it Okay, so here if you will run this program, so the same whatever we explained just now, 600 divided by zero that will come up with the arithmetic uh, exception here. Okay, because we cannot divide any number by the zero arithmetic except, uh, exception. Let's go to the next problem. So these are the some, uh, I think three questions will be the, yeah. So uh, now, yeah uh, why it's not scrolling down okay so let me take the other question as well okay i'll comment it out here okay so here here Okay. So here, uh, guys, just focus your uh, attention here. Uh, so basically, we have a try catch block here. So can anyone tell me why do we need try catch or basically what is try catch uh, in the program? Sir, try catch uh, are used to handle the exceptions. And in try, we write those statements uh, on which we have the doubt of uh, getting exception. And uh, catch is used to you know handle the exceptions thrown by try. Okay, okay, okay. So let me first uh, let me comment this catch block. Okay, I'll comment this catch block, and we will see what is happening if you are not writing in the try block or catch block, or what will happen or what will not happen. Okay, so here you can see, here you can see, since divide by zero is an word, it is categorized under the runtime exception. So even if you are not writing uh, under the try catch block specifically, this program will. Uh, be compiled this program will be compiled you cannot see any compilation error here but some exceptions will be thrown during the runtime okay to handle that exception whatever is coming during the runtime okay because why do we need to handle the program suppose you are going to some website let's say uh, any of the website let's say amazon.com you are trying to add some item in your cart you are clicking on the item and it is getting added to your cart but suppose some exception occurs so let's let's suppose some uh, code breaking happens in their uh, application in the amazon's application okay and at that time some exception occurs some exception occurs means suppose uh, a user is trying to add an item let's say which is having a name like uh, name size let's say 10 character okay but in their code they have written they have written a logic which should not accept a item to be added in a cart which is having the size greater than the 10 greater than 10 matlab let's say uh, you are having some specific special kind of products uh, which has recently launched on the amazon and the seller basically seller only used to give the name of the product right so seller gave the name more than 10 character okay i'm just telling you a story okay it's not the case in case of amazon because they are the uh, fault tolerant uh, website fault tolerant uh, application so they will handle all the situations but i am just telling you a story it can happen okay so in that case if the code is uh, there to add the uh, products in the cart of the name only having the character 10 
okay but if they have added if the uh, user is trying to add a product which is having the name of the size let's say 12 characters so in that case as soon as user will click on the add to cart button so their code will break the application will be uh, broken application will be broken means the user will see the blank page on the uh, browser okay it will be like white page the user will not understand what will happen what happened just now okay so to handle those kind of situation so that we can show a proper message to the user that you cannot add this item or some proper message okay so that the code does not get break but the user get or the uh, output of the program uh, gives you the proper message okay so that uh, for that we use this try catch block and we call it as a exception handling we are handling this kind of exception okay so uh, for that only for this arithmetic uh, exception we are using this try catch block here and here under the try block we are just printing system print a let's say just some random uh, values we are printing okay nothing no logic here then int num equal to 99 divided by 0 and system dot out dot print b a b then we have this catch block and then we have a catch block basically we have two catch block one is for the arithmetic expression other one is for the exception okay finally we are having we are not having any finally block there is one more block called finally but we are not having it here we will see later okay then we are having one more statement system dot out dot print dot e so what will be the output of this program anyone just look yes. into this code and tell me the output yes yes ACE 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 okay ACE someone is saying ACE how ACE uh, A printed okay A got printed uh, then what will happen then suppose then my exception occur uh, in a second okay okay exception Here, occur, exception. arithmetic ex arithmetic exception occur so yes. it not printed B uh, go gonna catch option on arithmetic exception and then okay. print a c then print c and e have not uh, any exception or uh, any catch option it uh, already it also printed correct correct so whatever this guy is saying that is correct only so basically our program will be executed from this line line number 15 which is nothing but the try block so it will enter into the try block it will find basically this first statement first line of code which is nothing but the printing of a so a has been printed let's say now if it, it will come to the line number 18 so here what will happen exception will basically occur because we cannot divide a number by zero so it will directly move it will not go forward it will not go to line number 19 from line number 18 itself it will go to the catch block and which catch block it will go this is the thing which which you should see here so here in line number 21 we have one catch block that is throwing what that is basically catching what not throwing catching what arithmetic expression at arithmetic exception okay in line number 25 it is just a ex exception okay so basically we have two catch block arithmetic and the exception okay so here as we had seen uh, we had seen there is a parent class there is a parent class and that is nothing but the basically if you will go to the hierarchy throwable error and here comes the exception okay here comes the exception so under the exception we have different kinds of basically different childs of exceptions are there different kinds means different childs okay so we have so many kinds of exceptions okay so one among them are one among them are arithmetic arithmetic exception okay so basically child of exception is arithmetic arithmetic exception is a child of the exception class okay so this thing you should see here so suppose child only came first child only came first so it will not go to father it will not go to father means it will not go to exception this particular catch block this particular catch block will not be executed if only if child has come first before the parent okay so in this case you will see the variation if you will execute this line of code if you will execute this program so you will see 
what you will see the uh, the same output a c e whatever we discussed just now a will be printed this will go to the sketch block and the uh, finally it will have the last line of code which is line number 29 that is 20 uh, e so a c e has been printed but just focus here what if i write this catch block before the arithmetic ex uh, exception okay so before the arithmetic exception if you will write it here so here you can see it is showing some error message yeah. violation okay. error what error message it is showing exception some has already text. been caught exception has already been exception arithmetic exception has already been caught so why it is showing like this why it is showing compilation error that you should understand see why i'm taking these questions means these variations of questions means in the interviews uh, basically in the placement papers they will give you such kind of code and they will expect you the output so you should be familiar with the concept first okay so here after try block you are writing the catch block that means that means catch block here in this catch block it is a parent class which is getting caught parent class means exception is a parent class okay so suppose suppose someone is trying to hit you and your parent came before you okay so suppose some of your neighbors uh, neighbor's child came to you for beating and your parent came before you to protect you okay so anyway that person will not be able to beat you right that will ha what happened in the real life situation so same is case uh, same is the case in the uh, programs also so basically this parent is protecting the child by coming before the child okay so basically arithmetic expression ex, uh, arithmetic exception has a child sorry parent exception class which is coming before the arithmetic exception in the program okay so that's why there is no use of this arithmetic exception here okay so already parent is there to handle it okay parent is there to catch this exception okay so that's why it is showing you compilation error so here in the ids you can see that that is this is of no use but in the uh, placement papers you will not be able to identify so in this case what will be printed first the option if you will get what will be printed a b c and d e all this uh, permutation combination they will give and the last this they will give you the compilation error okay so yeah you will get the compilation error so you should mark on the option called compilation error okay so first you should remember the child exception class should come before the parent exception class if there are multiple catch blocks okay if there are multiple catch blocks if i'll remove this then it will not show you the compilation error okay so if there are mul multiple catch blocks in your program then in that case the parent exception class should not come before the parent uh, before the child okay so here you can see arithmetic exception is a child of exception class an exception class is coming before the child class child exception class okay so that's why it is showing you the compilation error so you should just uh, focus on these things okay so that's about the uh, parent and child behavior in the ex exception of having the multiple catch block one more problem we have then we will go to the coding part core coding okay so basically i think this is related to uh, user defined exceptions okay so i will just paste this code. i'll just remove this code no point of writing it twice guys i will share this problem so that you can practice after the session also okay so try cache try cache okay so here here basically what we call there is some uh, concept i think already uh Arjit would have discussed it there is a concept called user defined exception user defined exception means what basically let's suppose let's suppose uh since we already have some child of exception class that is null pointer exception some array out of bond arithmetic all those kind of exceptions are already there with java has already in the java uh, basically the java program uh, already we are getting it as a inbuilt exception but what if we want to create some user defined what if the programmer developer wants to create its own exception okay and first first you should know why do we need to create the own exception why developer wants to create already if java is providing so why he needs to do the extra effort okay so that question it should uh, it should come in your mind okay so actually what happens in a real 
real program means the enterprise applications in the enterprise applications it is very necessary it is very necessary to pass a proper message proper message means proper exception if it is occurring in any part of the code to the developer to the console console means where you are getting the output basically it is very important why it is very important because in the enterprise application there used to be thousands of classes thousands of classes thousands of methods okay not even thousand it comes to be lakhs of methods lakhs of classes okay there used to be a microservices there is a concept of called microservices you will understand in the coming session okay so how a developer will know from where this exception is coming okay suppose some code is breaking okay it has gone to the production production means the users are using in the uh, environment okay so if some exceptions are coming some something is having uh, 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 something is getting have happen abrupt performance okay so in that case how a developer will identify that from which part of the code this thing is getting break or which part of the code is uh, uh, causing this issue okay so to handle those kind of situation user uh, basically a developer needs to define its own exception its own exception means if you are sub, if suppose null pointer exception is a common thing right in any of the from any of the program it can come okay but if you are defining this kind of some special kind of uh, exception some user defined exception then the developer will understand i am defining an exception called my exception and that is i am defining under this class only practice qe class okay so the developer can go and he can check this class directly he need not to search whole the whole program here you can see only one class is there but in the real program there will be thousands lakhs of classes lakhs of methods okay so to avoid such a situation okay the developer the programmer needs to create the user defined exception okay so basically here my there is nothing like a my exception in the exception class okay so how to create this uh, user defined so basically the user defined class is nothing but a java class itself so if you will mark it as a sorry if you will mark, if you will create a class with the name my exception so how to create the class with my exception already you would be knowing so class i have created okay and here you can see as soon as you created the class that exception has gone here okay so basically the uh, compilation error from here it went now if you are creating any uh, user defined exception so always you should extend it with what it should be a child of what it should be a child of exception class okay it should be a child of exception class and then you have to define a constructor of it constructor of it so i think already you would be knowing this concept and the constructor of this class would accept a message basically what message you want to pass when this uh, this exception occurs okay and then you basically call the uh, you call the constructor of the parent constructor of the parent means we are calling the constructor of the exception class here and we will pass that message to the constructor of the exception that is the parent okay so basically this is what we are doing okay so here here you can see uh, what code do we have basically we have this line of code okay uh, so we are from the first line basically what we are doing we are throwing the exception that means intentionally we are throwing this exception this my exception okay and in the catch block we are catching that exception okay so for, it's like the cricket game you are throwing the ball and someone is catching that ball okay so this try block is throwing the exception and this catch block will catch the exception okay let me remove this comment first Okay. Uh, why it is showing error? This bracket, this bracket is completed. This is completed. I need one more curly bracket. No, I don't want one more curly bracket. Sufficient. Okay. I will create it here. Okay. Okay. So now the question is, what line, which line of code will be executed first, and which will be executed last, and what will be the output of this program? Okay. So I think uh, would anyone would like to tell me what will be the output of this program or which line of code will be executed here first? Anyone? Sir, line number ten. Okay, line number ten. Geekster caught and uh, hello geeks will be the output. Geekster caught and, and hello, hello geeks. geeks. Hello geeks will be the output. Okay. 
the name of Omer under... is currently unavailable. Sorry. So guys, I think someone is calling to someone. So please go on mute. Okay. Uh, so here you can see in the try block, basically our program program execution will start with this try block. So here we are intentionally throwing this user defined exception. This user defined exception is nothing but the, this my exception here. So suppose try block is throwing some exception. Okay. So it will go to whom? It will go to the catch block. Obviously, it will go to catch block. Right? Yeah, so in the catch block, what we are doing, uh, yeah, uh, you are still saying guys away to me while you were typing, really? and then your call didn't come through. But then I, why this guy is very much disturbed? Okay, so here you can see line number 10. Since uh, the program will start with a try block, it will go to the catch block here. Line number 10 will be executed. In the line number 10, what do we have? Gaster call. Okay, then it will go to line number 11 also. So in the line number 11, you can see again a message is getting printed. So here basically what is the message? My exception class, it is basically what does the catch block accept? It catches the object of the exception. Object of the exception means the object of the exception class here. So here EX is having the object. Basically EX is like the object of my exception class. With the EX, we are calling the message, whatever the message this class has. So what is the message we are passing here? We are passing the hello gigs. So here you can see we are passing the message as a hello gigs to the exception class. Okay. So first line will be printed as a gigster code. Then we will have the hello gigs. Okay. So that's how the program flow will occur here. Okay. So let's see the output. The same output, whatever we discussed, that will come. Gigster code and hello gigs. Okay. Anyone has any confusion in this execution? Anyone? So, guys, since we have only few people, so it's better time for you to speak it out and clear your doubts if you have any. Okay. So, if no doubt, then let me proceed further. So, these were like this was the part of first question only. Some output of the program using the uh, for the exception classes. Now, let's go to the. Um, second uh, problem so basically what does the second problem says here create the method to read a text file and print all the line present in it also handle the exception if any okay okay so basically i'll just i'll ask you to uh, you only to do the program here i'll not uh, do i'll discuss it later but first you should try it here so uh, let's let me just discuss it here so basically, let's say I have this text file. OK, I have text file in my local in my machine. This is a text file. I want you to write a method, write a program basically, which reads this text file, which is in my local machine and print the line of the uh, text line of a text means suppose this is a line of uh, text, a list of some important check exception. So whatever is printed here, everything I want to print on the console here. OK, you got it right. So write a program to print the text document or and it can be any document. You first try with the text document. It will be just a text format. Okay. And print it under the console. Okay. I'll give you five minutes. Five minutes. You try it out doing. Then I'll discuss it. Okay. So whosoever will be doing it first. That means he has understood something from last two, three months, whatever the time you have spent here in the gigster. And whosoever has not, whosoever is not able to do that means they need to revise their concept. Okay, you need to put a extra effort. So I'll give you five minutes, guys. The problem is to print the text uh, content of a text document. I'll again show you the question here. Create a method to read a text file and print all the lines present in, in it. Also handle the exception if any. So if any exceptions are there, so you have to handle that exception also. So I know, I think you already know how to handle. You have to write it under the try catch block. You can throw the exception. You can catch the exception. Okay, so that's how you handle the exception. So I'll give you five minutes. So guys, please don't look on the screen. Just try coding it your own. So coding is not something which you will learn by looking to the videos or looking to the sessions or lectures. It can be learned only through practice. Okay, putting your brain on the keyboard and screen. 
सो ट्राई इट आउट गाइज डोंट गूगल इट डोंट डू ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग इट्स नॉट योर एग्जाम ओके इट्स नॉट लाइक यू आर गेटिंग जॉब आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस प्रॉब्लम Out of five minutes already, one minute has got over. Four more minutes, I'll give you. Then I'll discuss it here. I am expecting at least one two people should do it among these ten people. So whosoever has joined, so I think uh, those are the people who are serious to the gigster and serious to their career. So at least guys, I want two people or three people or maximum everyone. If you, everyone can do, that's well and good. so guys i am not going to take any break here until we finish i think two three problems will be there two three more problems will be there but that will be the basic uh, the more coding part so that needs time okay so i have to complete that uh, next one hour so don't expect the break here Ankit Pal, are you trying? Yes, sir. Okay, good. so so far we have seen the run time exception only with this example uh, i think you will see the this kind of i o exception that is your uh, compile time exception okay one more minute guys it's a very simple code actually it's just two three lines of code okay uh time up guys someone has sent good azhar ali and in the exception uh, using throws i o exception after uh, main method let me copy the entire logic mhm okay okay so whatever uh, what is his name mazhar has done that is correct only so guys let's look into the screen here okay so basically what is the problem uh, what problem says create the method to read a text file and print all the lines present in it okay so let's suppose we have this te text document let's say this is a text document we have uh, sorry 
this is a text document we want to print it uh, using the java program so first i need to save it it's not saved yet so let me save it somewhere in my local okay so here we'll say let me name it exception doc okay it's a text document only so i'll save it under the download folder okay fine i have saved it now let's go to our program our id so since it is asking us to create what it's asking us to create a uh, uh, method basically okay so let's uh, let us create a method let's not write under the main method we will call that method from the main method okay so let's create a private method private and since it is asking us to just uh, print it not to return anything so we will have the return type as a void private void let's name it as a read file okay now now to read the file first to read any file in java whosoever don't know first we need to create the object of the file object of the file in this sense basically in java we have a class called file under the input output package basically there are some uh, i think if you are not aware about the packages uh, basically the hierarchy in a project uh, basically in a java project we have a hierarchy like project then packages then classes then methods so don't worry uh, with the spring boot batch, uh, sessions you will come to know so basically we have this class called file under the java io package okay so if you will go under the package that's basically the inbuilt class in java so you will find this thing this uh, class of file and you will find the various methods here okay so we will use this inbuilt class file provided by java and what we will do we will try to create the object of this text document so this is one of the text document which is saved in my local so let's create the object of this file first so how to create the object already you know creating the object of any uh, any class so we just you do it using the new keyword that's a very easy thing okay and basically if you will go to the definition here you will see okay you will see you will see what you will basically see here some parameters so here you can see it its constructor is accepting some parameters okay string prefix length also so some parameters so basically for our purpose if you want to create the object of any file so you need to provide what you need to provide the path name path name is at which location of your machine this uh, particular file is present okay what is the directory for this file okay so uh, okay it will not be copied here so let me copy the path of that document which i want to uh, fetch it here through our program okay so exception document this is the one so let me go to its properties and copy it here okay so it is present under this directory okay so my mouse is not working properly okay so under this directory it is present and also i need to give the file name also so this is my file name exception doc okay so i'll give you the file name also okay so with this line of code we have created the object of the file now we have some some basically some ways are there in java to read the file okay some way, uh, re, uh, ways matlab ways means there are some inbuilt classes with the help of which you can read the file okay with there are file reader file output stream is there okay but the famous uh, famously used class is buffer reader okay it reads the uh, file in in form of byte code okay so buffer read this is the most efficient way I, I would say so basically we need to create the object of buffer reader also so let's see buffer reader with the new keyword only we will create buffer reader okay so basically this buffer reader it accepts what if you will go to the definition of buffer reader you will find it accepts the reader okay it accepts the reader reader matlab reader means you can see it is extending a class called reader under the reader you will find some some methods here uh, will not read uh, use these methods as of now okay so for our purpose let's go to the buffer reader itself here you will find basically i want you to show the constructor of this one so buffer reader is accepting the object of reader object of reader means it is again a class okay so reader is again a class in java so you can see it is again a class 
okay so in the constructor we need to provide the object of reader okay so object of reader basically we need the file reader okay file reader matlab file reader is a again a sub class of reader okay file reader is also a class which is a child class of a reader so this reader whatever you are seeing right so this is a parent of file reader okay and under this file reader we will pass this file object basically whatever we have created above okay now now with these two steps we have created first step is creating the object of file second step is uh, making this buffer reader to read the content of the file so what will happen it will feed the input this uh, content of this file to this buffer reader and buffer reader will be able to read this line okay so basically we have this buffer reader dot read line method is there so what will happen this read line will read the lines and it will print it so basically it will give you the string format value here you can see it is returning the string values the read line okay you can save it you can run it you can uh, basically the print it okay but but here you see it is showing something in a this red color okay so what it is showing it is showing unhandled exception java io file not found exception okay so what it means suppose suppose you have given this proper path right what if i don't give the proper path suppose i give this much only how my buffer reader will understand this particular path which is not correct how it will understand suppose it is going to look for this directory which is not correct this kind of directory is not present in my machine so how what how this buffer reader will understand this kind of reader files this kind of files basically which is which does not exist so the meaning of showing it in a red color is what if this file does not exist in your system suppose you are trying to read a file and that doesn't exist okay so that's why it is showing you it is just asking you to handle me handle this kind of scenario this kind of exceptions basically okay so that's why it is showing you that exception this in a compile com, uh, basically it is a compilation error compilation uh, exception okay compile time exception and that is here you can see it is showing in a red color that means it is a checked ex exception also it is getting checked during the compile time okay so basically we can do it using that try catch block okay you can just write it under the try catch block or you can throw it and whosoever is calling this method there we can there we can catch it okay so basically let's throw from here so that you will understand the throws concept also so basically from this method we will throw the exception if any exception will come we will throw it okay and what specific kind of exception does it throw it throws the file not found exception file not found exception and that is nothing but your input output exception io exception we say okay so input out, output exception so remember guys input output exception is a compile time exception okay compile time exception so as you have thrown the exception it went the compilation error went from here okay so here you can see with this line of code it will read the uh, all the input which is provided by this particular object file reader that means the all content of this particular file and it will read it but how basically uh, here we are not writing any condition right basically uh, it will keep on write it will keep on reading it will keep on reading means a file uh, basically it will have the n number infinite length right basically if you are not terminating our program so it will keep on running it will keep on running it will keep on scanning my file every time it will scan the blank spaces also if blank spaces means this all empty spaces everything it will scan okay so that is not good so basically for that we used to write it some some logic to terminate our uh, reading terminate our reading we will ask buffer reader to read only till we have the read lines till we have the lines means till we have the content in the file okay it should not read the blank spaces that's what we mean okay so for that let's let's uh, write a while condition while this particular thing while while this read line while this read line is not equal to null okay so till the time this is not null that means if some content is there we want to print that one so let's print it let's print it okay so basically you can save it here also that's not an issue you can save it here as some variable otherwise you can directly print it okay 
so what we are doing we are running the loop till some content are there we are not asking it to read the empty space empty space matlab this kind of blank space and okay it will read and it will print it okay so now now since it is a method and it will not be called automatically so we need to call it through the main method so let's call this as in a main method so if you will call this in a main method let's make it a static method so that we cannot create the object so read file we have got so here you can see it is showing the compilation error again so again it is showing unhandle exception because here from here we are throwing the exception okay no one is there to catch it we are just writing the uh, we are just calling this method but we are not handling it isn't it isn't it guys any issue here any difficulty in in understanding basically with this method we are throwing the exception and where we are calling the uh, calling this method there we are not handling it okay so there there are two ways as you already know we can throw the exception here okay otherwise we can use the try catch block so let's use the try catch block try block under the try block we will call this method okay and under the catch block we will catch the io exception we'll catch the io exception and we will print if any exception occur e dot print get localized message or e dot print message print stackers okay so we are basically printing the message whatever exception will come okay and then uh, if no exception will come it will get print the content of the file whatever is there here whatever you can see it will be printed so let's run the program and see what will happen i am closing this unnecessary opened file okay so as soon as you will run the program so what is happening let's see so focus here guys so basically this is a line of code one two three four lines so here you can see it is showing the system cannot find the file is specified okay so again what is this you can see file not found exception it is showing this file is not present in your machine it is saying it is not present the basically the code this buffer reader is there right it is not able to read okay the file reader is providing the option providing the content but since this object does not exist so file object is not getting created okay so why it is happening okay sir so given backslash the... s no no instead no. of backslash s see see i'll i'll tell you uh, see uh, in coding in the programs one thing you remember okay so this complete this uh, backslash is equal to this remember this thing this backslash this backslash is equal to one not this way this this backslash is equal to one forward slash so either you give double backslash or you give forward slash that is equal okay okay if you will give only single it will show you compilation error so double backslash is equal to single forward slash okay so that is the concept in the program so you should remember so why it is showing error because this file name we are not specifying its type its type matlab its type means here you can see it is a text document it will have a extension called the doc txt so if you will write dot txt so at this time it will go under this directory it will find this document okay it should not uh, throw the exception now because we are specifying the correct file okay if simply we will give the file name without the extension it will not read okay so here you can see all the content has been printed whatever we were having here okay whatever we were having everything has been printed here sir okay. first line uh, i think it is not uh, printed correct correct yeah correct because so what is we happening? have already read the line yeah yeah two lines not printing second, it. yes second line every second line is getting printed correct correct so what will happen what will happen yeah so what is happening with this while condition also you are reading the line but you are not printing so what will happen as many times you will call this read line method it will go to the next line so suppose one read line method call this thing okay so in the while block in the while condition you are writing buffer reader dot read line so it read this line but you are, since you are not printing that line you are printing the second line if you are calling this method means it will call the second line that is nothing but the 
class not found okay so that's how it is getting printed okay so here in this case it is a blank space no doubt then class not found so this way it will happen so better we assign it to some variable here a string let's say s okay and we will print the will print what will print the s yes here okay will print the s here so this is how we can uh, do it here so that we can read all the content of the line so why it is showing error string s equal to <laughs> okay let us put it in a bracket otherwise we'll create a show is not equal to null what happened guys string s <laughs> why it is showing error anyone not a statement what error i am doing here unexpected token string s is equal to buffer buffer read a dot uh, read line r before the while loop and then it not show the error so before while loop uh, before while loop if you will do it will not read yeah. right string s yeah, equal to uh, yeah yeah unexpected token symbol s cannot be string okay. sir uh, instead of uh, you know creating variable string there create before while loop string s okay we can do that one as well let's see but this should work here also right what it is having issue that is not a problem that is fine it work under the while anyway some issue would be there we'll see later okay so but, basically uh, sir what we can do is you you just declare the variable string line at line number 20 and in line number 21 write line is equals to buffered reader dot read line just declare at 20 don't uh, uh initialize okay okay it. i got i got it what you are saying okay, yeah yeah okay. that is correct so can anyone tell me what i was doing wrong here see string is immutable right so every time since you are declaring a symbol single variable single variable you are trying to override it so that's what that's what issue it was having okay so you can do it like this also otherwise you can just declare it uh, in a one second you can just make it like this okay just declare the string and here you can make a line equal to line equal to what buffer reader, buffer reader dot read line dot read, read line. line yeah so why again it is showing error yeah. then uh, i mean uh, parenthesis provided boolean required type yes sir parenthesis maybe so with this line it will assign this value to the line and we will print that line here okay so if you will run so it will print all the content of the file okay so here you would have seen the two concept first thing is how to read the file okay how to read the file and how to handle the uh, input output exception that is a compile time exception so you can see all the content of the file has been printed here whatever we were having here okay so this way you can read the file you can print it or you can do whatever you want the basic idea behind showing you this example was handling the input output exception that is nothing but your compile time exception so from here you can you are throwing it here you are catching it the other way also you can do directly you can write the thing in the try catch block under this method itself okay so if you will call here again basically you can throw it here so other way also it is possible you can throw the exception here right under the try clause try catch block under this method or the this way also so anything is was fine okay so that about that was about this problem so i have two more problem for the today and these are the important problems these are related to your list and the map concept okay so uh, again i'll give you 5 minutes to work on this i think uh, this is a easy problem i would say so everyone should be able to do okay so create a method returning the optional of list of integer okay so i think optional all you didn't on the red till now you didn't understand the concept of optional so java 8 uh, right ignore this optional java okay, 8 concept to, to tomorrow yeah yeah it's the java 8 concept tomorrow it will be there optional session will be there tomorrow but 
just forget it can be done without the option also so create a method returning list of integer and accepting a generic type list which returns the size of each element in the list okay so basically you have to create a method which will accept the list of string or integers so basically you have to create a generic method which can accept any kind of data so okay single method and you have to return what you have to return the size of the each element so here you can see jack has size one two three four four characters so four one element will be four zim has uh, three characters so three john has four characters so it will be four i think it is mistake here so it will be four john has four so it's similarly for the numbers also eight seven eight nine so it has four digits six five has two digits uh, 980 has three digits and 10 has two digits okay so write the method generic methods which can accept a uh, list of strings or a numbers and in return it will give you the list of size of the elements okay size of each elements in the list okay so this is the first problem i'll give you five minutes 20 20 okay so 21 20 it is going and you have to uh, complete it till 25 925 okay so start doing guys it's a very simple problem ignore this optional keyword here it will not make any effect you will be able to do optional question tomorrow tomorrow you will learn this concept create a separate method and that should be a generic method So guys, everyone should try it at least. Two more minutes, guys. Share the code if anyone has done.
10 people were there now eight people are only there two people left not good how you will do it for the numbers will it work for the number you are not writing in the ID, any id right it will show you the compilation error no, for the second one it will not show the okay okay anyone else okay uh, so let's see here who server has done that's well and good otherwise just see here okay so basically we have to uh, create the method which will accept the generic type of generic type of word generic type of list and it will give you the size of the uh, each elements in the list okay so let's create the method private okay uh, we have to return what list of integers okay already mentioned here so get size let's name it as a get size list of uh, t we will give and we will name it as a list let's see okay so here you can see it is showing you error here a compilation error so already you would be knowing i think so class level you have to declare the generic okay so we have declared here now what you have to do basically you have to return the list uh, of the integer which each size here with the elements of uh, with the size of each element okay so what we can do we can use the for loop or we can use the advanced for loop let me use the advanced for loop here okay so how you will how we will use it is of type t okay let me take a variable name l list okay so with this way i can iterate now uh, i need to put the size under the uh, basically with this way l dot will convert each element to a string dot its size size or length i think length is the function here. length length sir okay so length will give you the basically the integer value now you have to put this value every time in the uh, list here so you need to create the list also so list of uh, integers let's create a array list okay output i will name it to new array okay in this array list just add all the sizes okay so output list dot add add we will add it here okay so add it now at finally we will do what we will return it return the output okay that's it this was the only problem so the major uh, idea behind showing you the asking you to do this problem was introducing you with the generic type of list okay so we'll see how this type of list will work for both integers and numbers also okay so anyone has any doubt with this thing anyone who didn't understand what we are doing if you understood then well and good so let me uh, call that method here so how to call we have to pass basically the uh, list of first we will call the uh, pass the list of uh, integers and then strings okay we will copy this thing only otherwise let's add it okay we will create one list list of first we will pass the string okay input let's uh, name it as a input input equal to new array list i am doing a step by step so that you can understand input dot let's add some element okay we will add some elements we uh, will add jack jim and john okay jack jim and john john 
okay so this list we have now now we can call that method call that method means call this one private stat let's make it a static also okay uh, okay this will not work we'll have to create that public only public okay so here you can see we'll have to create the object uh, new will not create using the generic one public new dot read sorry uh, what is the name get size then input we will pass okay so basically you will get the output here we can directly print it okay so basically it will return you the list of list of integer okay that will be your output out i named it let's print out out we will print the out okay so now let's run the program so let's see if we are getting desired output so here you can see four three and four we got that means the size of the jack was four jim was three and john was four okay now let's call the same method for the integers okay so this time we will create the uh, values in the list with the integers okay integers so how to create the list of integer means you have to provide it here integer type input one we will name it input one we will name it okay and here sorry we will name it as output one here we will name it as output one and he will have it a input one input one and input one let's put some numbers here we'll use the same numbers whatever is given in our question eight seven eight nine eight seven eight nine then sixty sixty five then we have ninety eight okay then let's add one more number that is ten okay so input one input one dot add ten so this time we are sending for the uh, numbers also okay so let's call those two methods so let's print one out here okay calling size method this is just for our understanding with integer input okay and before we were having the string so here we will call using the string input so that we can understand for which one uh, we are getting output okay now let's run the program so as soon as you will run you will basically get the size of your input size of your input means first you will get for the string values that means jack jim or john 4 4 3 and 4 and and then for the integer you got 4 2 2 and 2 okay <laughs> four, two, two. this is your 4 2 2 so other three are of size 2 only so this way you got so the uh, the benefit of you creating the generic method is that any type of input here you need not to specify this particular type of list you need to input okay you can pass the integer also string also okay any data type. you can pass any object also okay any pojo class okay so this is the benefit of creating the generic methods in java and this is very very important guys so you should know how to create it's a very easy nothing complicated you just have to at the class level you have to write uh, in diamond bracket one variable just take any variable and the same variable you have to use it under the uh, with the methods okay so that was about the generic example sir is it possible method. to create generic methods without specifying angular brackets in class without specify angular bracket in the class this one you are saying here yes, you sir. are saying yes sir see if you will remove it here if you will just see you should try all these things okay so if you are removing the uh, those kind of uh, angular bracket at the class level what it is showing you here cannot resolve type symbol t so basically basically what is happening what is happening uh, how this t is getting how the compiler will understand what is this t 
what is this particular variable okay mm -hmm. suppose suppose you are take it, taking it as a list here okay i will just i'm just removing the type here so what is list here how compiler will understand what is list okay so basically we need to define its type what is list we will have to tell compiler what is this list or any variable whatever we are using in our program that's why we first used to declare its type what is the type uh, it it belongs to okay so that's why we are defining at the class level okay that's why otherwise it will not identify this t symbol okay it will not identify this t symbol okay so automatically it will give you some uh, basically the suggestions create class t this thing this thing so anyway we don't want t class okay we we just have we want to create a generic type right so none of these uh, suggestions works for us we need to just create the generic method and this is the sir, syntax it's, word is possible sir can you remove that line number 8 sorry can you remove angular brackets from line number 8 line number 8 here ah, okay 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 and come to the method okay and uh, before list of integer write angular bracket and t before list of integer public okay, after so public I, I, after public okay, after okay wait 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 so the same thing yeah so here you are saying right yes sir here you are saying right so same yes, thing sir. same it it means it meant same right you are defining at the class level its type or here see in the benefit of writing at the class level is you can have the multiple methods without declaring its type without de uh, considering this type of t okay so if you are declaring it like this so again if you need some generic method so there also you will have to create like this right acha so it will act as type. global global data that type correct 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 at okay. the class level okay so that's why we define at the class level no doubt if you want to have only one method so you can create it that's not an issue okay sir so yes, uh, yeah uh, in the main method uh, while uh, we are taking list of integer uh, out equal to new practice q of get size that thing line number 23 this one uh, uh, without that new practice of q just if you give it as directly equals to get size of input it won't return the value to the integer so list so oh which one you are saying are you saying this one ah uh, yeah uh, why is that part necessary i'm asking sir normally for if you are taking any int value is written directly will uh, equate it to the method na sir why are we putting here new practice q method sir sir okay. i'll tell i'll tell because yeah, yeah, generic yeah. methods could not be called without creating the objects it is mandatory to create object so as to call the generic methods okay okay somewhat you are correct see uh so server has asked a question see how you can call any method suppose you have to call any method within the same class same class and that is non static method non static method so you can call directly right so read file if i have to call i can call that method directly here not an issue isn't it anyway it is showing compilation error because of that try catch block that is other thing can i call it here yes sir but since since in a generic type we cannot have a static method right? we cannot create a static method here if we can call the, the one which you are saying without new basically we are creating the object object of the class okay practice so queue create, method will create an object of the class yeah that's what right okay, so okay. this is i think i know why you are getting confused see Uh, I, i am creating it without the reference that's why you are getting it confused don't get confused you are getting confused because of this right i am separately uh, yes, i am no, not understood sir yeah yeah separately i am not creating that's why you are getting confused uh, sir can call it like sir like yeah. uh, if if we want uh, our method to static uh, then we have to give uh, this thing uh, generics in the method correct Correct, 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 correct. Okay, so if you are declaring, these are the sub permutation common everything you have to think of. So here you are doing what? You are defining at a uh, class level. That means you are defining your generic type at the class level. So how it will create the uh, how it will create the object itself? Okay, for the static methods. So that's why it is having. 
so you try it. i will not tell everything something should be there for you experiment also okay so everything you should try okay what if i we want to have the static method here here we are not having a static method right it's like the normal uh, non static method this is the static method it cannot be without object also we can call this thing so you already read these things in the java so i need not tell all these things you should know uh, by yourself okay so this was about this problem uh, the basic idea behind this explaining this problem was introducing you with the generic concept of the uh, accepting the list generic list okay and uh, okay that's fine we have 20 more minutes and one last problem also we have so this is also an important question i think this question was asked in one of the interviews also so uh, basically i'll explain you you have to basically return return the map here it is a hint for you so map means suppose if you are given an input as a nearest let's say my name so here what is the thing you have to return the count of each characters so if we say count of each character means so n comes how many times e comes how many times in this word r comes how many times a comes how many times so here you can see output is like n equal to a e equal to 2 r equal to a a equal to 1 and j equal to 1 okay so basically it is one of the way to solve the problem to return the count of each character in a string or in a number okay so basically you have to create the generic method this time also so that we can use it for the numbers also for the integers also okay so here you can see zero is coming one time one is coming two time two is coming two time four is coming three times so three times four four is there sorry so uh, just just try it out five minutes again i'll give you try it out uh, one hint is that you have to use the hash map with the hash map it can be solved very easily guys at least try at least if you will put your brain for 5 minutes 10 minutes that will be a very good exercise for your brain also so don't keep your brain unused i know some of people will be only looking in, on the screen so it's not good it's not going to be beneficial for those people Pritam Sankal Abhishek. I think everyone would be from uh, North India only, right? Anyone from South India who cannot understand Hindi or? Uh, sir, I am from South India, but uh, I can understand Hindi as well. Okay, okay, great. No, why I am asking means in my last batch there was a big concern because sometimes I was using Hindi also. <laughs> so they were very concerned every time i used to speak so that time they will uh, they will put this concern i am not understanding so slowly and steadily i just occupied those, that environment also so uh, guys uh, you should be familiar with java 8 concept also so java 8 is a very very important concept so in java 8, right now you are using this for loop uh, the traditional way of looping right so that is very uh, that, that is actually the so many of lines so many lines of code you need to write using the traditional for loop but with java 8 using the for each method or stream apis you can just solve it within one line okay so uh, 
some of the java concept uh, java 8 concept we will discuss here but not all since we have the time restrictions someone sent me the code uh, static yeah so only one guy is sending continuously what about the other people are you not focusing here or what map static map characters this is okay method t map dot replace Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this is correct only. Okay, I'll do it using the string now. You have done using this characters, okay, considering it as a character. But what will happen with the numbers? Uh, suppose you are sending it as a number, so you are converting to string. Okay, I'll one dot to string. Okay. Okay, so uh, one guy sent it some coding. What about other people? Nobody else sent. Okay. Okay, now let's discuss it. So uh, again, let's once more go to the problem statement. So basically, uh, you will have to create one method, get count, that will accept uh, basically a generic type parameter, and uh, it will return the map map of uh, basically the uh, count uh, key as a character and the it's count as a um, count as a integer okay so let's create this method get count t okay we will create public and then since we have to return a map it's not mentioned but with the map we can do it Okay, so one guy has done it using the character. Already he has shared the code. I'll do it using the string. I'll just consider the as a string a different way basically. Character is also correct only. So map of a string and this one I will consider. Now. Okay, so basically since we have, we can have integer also string also so the very first step we should do is we should convert this to string value okay we should convert this to string value so what we can do the input which we are getting first we can convert to a string okay and and to make it like uh, since we are just uh, here, here here he has used his characters and all so let's let's try to reduce this line of code anyway uh, we cannot reduce much here but let's let's do it like uh, uh, what we can do using this for loop right this is a traditional for loop let's let's see if we can use the advanced for loop here okay so here what we can do since you know there is a method called the split uh, in the uh, string okay so as soon as you are converting to the string you can split it okay so basically you will get each each characters in the input as a string format okay so what does it mean so you can see if neeraj is there so if this is the input you are passing so what by this line of code by line number 58 what will be the output you will get basically this thing this thing means this you will get like this n comma e okay comma e comma r comma a and comma j so with this line number 58 you will come up with uh, this as a output okay if you are passing mirror as a input here okay so this will be the output here let me write it here okay now now since we have got this as a uh, basically this will be what this will be a uh, uh, array array of string array of string array of string so let's say let's store it somewhere let's store it in i n some variable called i n okay now we can iterate this and we can count the count what count the uh, character value the basically the occurrence of each character here okay so let's run the advanced for loop we'll run the advanced for loop of type string 
and we will take as a i as an input then i'll out i take it out of i n okay now now since we are as, uh, accepting here uh, basically we are expecting to return the map of type string and integer integer will be the count no doubt we can count it okay but we need to store it uh, in some map okay so let's create the object of map also okay so we'll create the map object for the hash map okay and that will be of type string comma integer so already one guys shared for the character uh, considering it as a character you can consider now with the string also so you will have the two different approach two different way basically okay so new hash map okay now in this map only we will have to store the occurrence of each character okay so uh, first suppose neeraj has been feeded to this method so and uh, neeraj came and with this line of code you got it the input like this okay so if you are iterating it with line number 60 so iterating means first n will come okay then let's suppose if we are writing it like this writing it like this means uh, suppose we are storing the map dot put, put there is a method called put in the map okay and we can put the value put the value means we can put the s that is your character and its corresponding value corresponding value means 1 okay so so here i will be our value since we are storing in the variable called i so every time we are putting put i 1 so every time it will count the character it will basically iterate throughout this uh, uh, input values and it will give the One 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 one, but we don't want that one. Uh, that right, we want to make the count also. So so, suppose for the first time n came, and uh, with this line of code it has stored map dot put i one means n one it will store. Okay, now next time in the next iteration e will come. So e if it is putting so e one e one till this time it is correct. So n we got. with the two of the iteration what i mean with the two of the iteration what we will have n equal to 1 e equal to 1 so this we will get now with the third iteration also we will get like this if we are putting this logic okay similarly r equal to 1 and uh, r a equal to 1 and similarly j equal to 1 so this the output we will get with this logic is something like this every one it will count every time it will count Uh, it will find a character it will just give you a count as a one but we don't want we want the count also so what we should do before putting that uh, character before putting that value in the map we should check if that value already exist in the map or not if it exist we will increase its count by one otherwise we will insert a new entry okay so how we can do we just put one condition if map dot there is a method in my map called contains key contains key means suppose in the map already you would be knowing the values are stored in the form of key value pair so we are checking if the key exist or not so if key means the value which is iterating so, so first time n will be there it will check if n exist in the map so if in the starting n will not be there so that's fine then it will go for e okay so map dot contains i if it contains so what we will do we will put map dot put okay we will put what we will put we will put the i and the its value plus 1 so how to retrieve the value from a map, map based upon the key how we can retrieve the value of a, a value from a map based upon its key what is the function anyone map dot get is a function so if you will pass the get the key value it will give you the value basically and just add it so whatever the will be the count before it will just add one to it otherwise if the map does not contain any key so we will return we will just add a new entry in the map okay so this is how we can do it and finally we can return the map here return the uh, map name is map only okay so this is how we can proceed so basically we are just checking in the map whatever we declared if already some entry are there if the entries are there we are just increasing its value so basically in the map values are stored in the form of key and pairs 
okay so we are just checking if key contains if key is there that means it will have the value also so value plus 1 we are doing otherwise we are inserting a new entry okay now let's call this method from the main method okay so here we will call it uh, let me comment this line of code okay so here we are just get count okay so with the object we need to create since we are not using a static method so new practice queue dot get count okay and now we need to pass the values also first time we will pass the nearest okay and the second time we will pass some uh, some integer values nearest practice queue or here we will pass the some dot get count sorry okay, my mouse is not working and keyboard is also getting issue okay so here basically uh, uh, we are calling with two different inputs first as a neeraj as an input second as this number will take whatever is given in our problem statement 1224001 this will return a map here so we can just store that map somewhere map of uh, string comma integer okay so out one we will name it and similarly we will name the out two for the different input okay out two okay so simply just print the out one and out two uh, out one and then we'll print the out two also out two okay so now let's run the program and see if any exception occurs or something so basically this was the only the logic part other than from the main method we are just calling it with the two different input okay so here you can say a came one r came one e came two that's what we wanted j came one and came one okay so and in case of numbers so here you can see in case of numbers one is having two times one is two times zero is one time okay two is two times four is three time okay so we are getting the desired output also so this was about this particular problem which was to uh, give you the count of each characters okay in a uh, map format okay so this way we can do it so here you learn two concepts one is the map concept hash map basically how we can implement the hash map and how we can uh, have the generic uh, input generic take the generic parameter as a input okay so here you can see if i would have declared the generic uh, type uh, here so every time i need to do it here okay so if you will declare your gen type that is your t here at the class level so no need to do it for the methods every time it will take it automatically okay so that was about today's practice problems i'll share some of the questions like two three questions only not much for your homeworks so try it doing and with this problems here here you can see just to brainstorm yourself here you can see it is coming in uh, some different order okay some different order means it is not like ascending or descending or any particular order okay so 0 1 2 4 okay this is ascending order based upon the key and this is having some some order okay a r e okay so just try to just uh, send the map in a sorted order maybe ascending order or descending order let's see how you can do so there is some concept how to sort a map based upon the key or value so you can just try doing that uh, using your own concepts or using some taking some help from the internet okay so basically you should know how you can sort a map okay here it is not giving you in a sorted format so what if you want to have in a sorted format so what we can do how we can sort the map we don't have a map sorted method okay so you cannot sort it like this so we have some comparator comparable things so you should just just try to do it yourself okay i'll give you a hint there is something called the comparable interface okay so with the help of comparable interface you can just sort a map based upon the key or based upon the value whatever you want okay so here you can see it is not sorted it is not in a sorted format just try to sort it by your own okay so that's it from my end uh, thank you for joining the session at least 10 9 people joined so that's good
uh, you will have to put some extra effort from your end because Spring Boot uh, batch is coming. So all this was the prerequisites uh, which we have involved from this batch itself. Before we had not involved these things directly, we started the Spring Batch, uh, Spring Boot, sorry. So uh, just take the advantage of these sessions. The initial uh, one week, I would say, for this uh, for this complete week, uh, we'll go with these concepts only, error exceptions, and then we have some Java concepts also, so Java 8 concepts. So try to just involve yourself with those concepts and make yourself comfortable so that you can understand the Spring Boot con concepts easily. Okay, so yeah, that's it from my end. I'll stop the recording now. And now you can log off. Okay.